Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, a short video this time. This came from Live2. So you can see what we've got here is a 68,000 socket and pins to go into the 68,000 socket. <laughs> Gotta go, fast RAM. Very cool. 8 meg auto config fast RAM by Live2 it's on GitHub. Yeah, that's as uh, inspired by MKL's uh, 68, uh, MEM 68K, I think it is. So he's got programming uh, header there, I think. That's the auto config chain, you know, uh, in and out, because that's what you need to use with an A2000. You only need to feed a wire to the uh, config out and a wire to config in, figure exactly where those will go. Uh, a couple of ground tabs. So it's very nice. It's got a RAM chip here. I'm guessing that's 8 meg, it might be more than 8 meg, but it's only going to support 8 meg. That's the thing, and we've got a Xilinx chip here, and what looked like a couple of uh, bus transceivers or something there. Perhaps to do with the uh, logic level differences, you know, voltage level differences there. They've got some jumpers on the underside there. So let's go give it a try. We'll try it on one of my A2000 boards first. I'll work, work my way through the different boards there. And uh, we'll perhaps try it on a 500 plus and maybe one of the other 500s as well. So we've got the good old uh, Rev4 A2000 here that you've seen me upgrade the uh, Fat Agnes on, fix the RAM on, fix corrosion on, and uh, a number of other things. As you can see, it's working. So let's remove the CPU and uh, fit the RAM module. Because I have no other Zorro cards in this at the moment, I think we'll be okay without doing anything with that, uh, you know, the config in, config out pins. But if I connect something else up that uh, uses Zorro, uh, we might need to do something with those. So we'll, we'll, we'll just see how we go, really. You can see the pin one mark in here, uh, and the pin one uh, wants to go down there. So, so let's just connect that up there, like that. There we go. I've chosen this board first of all because you could see it had the turn pin socket, which means that when you stick uh, pins like this in, it's, uh, you've got less risk of damaging your socket. The pins on this seem pretty thin though. Is that going to go in? Yeah, there we go. That's in. I'll switch it back on. The interesting thing there is it seems to take longer there on the grey bit, on the grey screen, which makes me think it's uh, it's going to have additional RAM or you know detected. So let me find a disk to boot from, and let's see what this reports. Yeah, there you go. 8 meg fast, 1 meg chip. Fantastic. Let's uh, do test all. So, I mean, straight away <laughs> it works, which is sweet. It's really nicely assembled that as well. I'll give you a close up with macro in a minute just so you can see how nice and tidy the board is. As you can see, it's on round two there, tested without an issue. So, initial signs are that that works okay. Now, I will connect up a uh, later version of Kickstart to this because at the moment it's got 1.3. In all of that, I can test it with some games and things. I can connect my A2091 SCSI card up, boot that. But I think the next thing I'm going to do is just disconnect this board, connect up the Rev6 A2000 board, and test it on that. That's already got Kickstart 3.1, so that'll just give us a bit of a head start, really, in terms of being able to boot some of the cards and things that I've got here, as you'll see. So one thing I will point out, and it's exactly the same with MKL boards and things, and there's, there's no way around it, when you get the chip off, you know, off here, be very careful because if you were to get the screwdriver too far in, you'll start to lever onto some of these SMD components and traces and things. So, it's probably uh, best to, uh, well, just be very careful. It's the same down here. I think when I put the screwdriver under, I could feel the top of that chip there. So, uh, I've not damaged it or anything, but it's just something to be aware of. And of course, it's going to be a similar issue levering this, just very carefully, just try and do it on the very edge of the board. Same on both sides here, just gently, gently, a little bit at a time. I'm trying to use the plastic part here on the underneath of the uh, PCB just so that it comes out without any damage. There we go, that's out, as you can see. And uh, Lift2 also kindly sent me a bag of some spare pins here, which is, uh, is really good. And here's a quick look at the board on the macro. So you can see it's uh, very nicely assembled there. Got the Xilinx chip, the RAM, and those uh, two transceivers. Now on the underside here, you can see this one's Rev B, November 2020. 
a uh, couple of jumpers there yeah gotta go fast ram fantastic so this is the Rev6 board again this was repaired in a previous video I'll stick a link up there to that you can see it's got its original socket here that was just cleaned up and the corrosion was quite uh, weak minor you know really minor hardly any damage at all but I was waiting for some new sockets so I'll perhaps replace this socket soon I want to put turn pin I prefer turn pin on these but what we can do because that's not got a CPU currently fitted we can uh, connect up the uh, TF536 here as I say, this will be covered in another video. But for the for purposes of testing here, let's just connect that up. So it's in the CPU slot. Yeah, it took me a few attempts to get the uh, card working there. It was because this 536 has been sat around for quite a while and uh, the edge just needed clean. Can you see there? 65 meg. So that's the RAM on the 536. That's working. So I've switched it off. Now as I said before, when you're dealing with mods that have got uh, round pins like this, just be mindful that once you stick them in here, that these pins can be on the socket can be a bit loose in future. There's, there's no way around it because you can't get anything else to use as a sub there. Uh, but this socket will be replaced. I wanted to replace it. I'll show you. I've got a pile of these 68,000 sockets that came from RS. They're quite hard, or they were quite hard to find, but I found them on RS online, so that going to go in. Yeah, things have been in that socket before, which is why that doesn't seem to feel like it's fitting very well. Let's uh, switch it on. Let's just check pin one. Pin one's definitely right. Switch it on. It's booting off floppy. Let's check that. Oh, there we go. 73. So, is that right? Yeah, 65 plus 8 equals 73, that's correct, so 73 mega RAM, <laughs> so I'll do test all, I'll report back in a minute, that's a crazy amount of RAM, 73 meg, so it hasn't even finished one uh, round yet, it's still going round, um, so yeah, I will be removing the socket on here, it's fitting a uh, turn pin, one of these here, you can see these are brand new ones from RS, I've got a fair few of those, um, but what I will do is reclaim the old one because the pins are not too bad on that and I'll remove each of the pins, retension it and then put it back together and it will do as a replacement socket should I ever run out of uh, these ones. And if you are looking for a socket for a 68000, do check RS online. At the moment they've got stock. These came to me about a week ago. They were, I think they ordered a few thousand in or something so I'd add them on pre-order um, but they're quite cheap they're like a pound or two each or something if you look on eBay you'll be paying five six seven eight pounds a socket these days because they are so hard to get hold of so yeah check RS online still going around look even after all that waffle hasn't even got to 1.2 yet because obviously there's such a large amount of RAM to test there Wow, you wouldn't believe it, it's still going. It's been going for about uh, 10 minutes now. It hasn't even got round one pass yet. And up down this board, you can see I socketed these chips when we did the repair. I also did that one. I can't remember whether I covered that in the video, but I put a socket there as well. Yay, finally onto the second pass. That took about 20 minutes. I kid you not. So I attempted to boot from Compact Flash Card. Uh, now, this card, sometimes I have to insert and remove it a few times. It's uh, a bit of a loose connection, I think. Let me just uh, hold down the two buttons here, just to see what's detected. So I'm holding down the two buttons to see what kickstart detects there. Yeah, so we've got two there. We've got the uh, 536, which I think is 5080. That's a uh, terrible fires code there. And the 2011, which must be what Liv is using for the uh, RAM board there. So it's unexpectedly turned into a compact flashcard repair this, as you can see. I've wrenched these off. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. If I connect this into the PC, it's detected it once after I cleaned up with a little bit of deoxy here. And then uh, I tested it again and then it wasn't working again and I took it back to the PC. Couldn't get it to read it at all. So I think what I'm going to do is reflow the pins here. They're so small. You can see there's lots of flux from manufacture there. What I can do with this, I've marked it there to say bottom. Um, I can get a bit of hot glue around the edges on both sides just to hold it because you can see it wobbles a little bit in there. But we've still got the frame and that's the thing that you know keys it when you put it into the, the thing there. So uh, all is not lost. If I can uh, 
fix whatever the bad connection here is, it should work again. So you're on super macro there, you can see the pins that go to the socket there. So yeah, they're looking a bit dull aren't they, it's like really dull solder. Uh, lots of uh, flux around that, is it a Samsung? Yeah, Samsung flash ROM and the controller chip here. So I'm going to start by just cleaning around here with some IPA and then I'll get a little bit of flux on there and just reflow it really carefully under magnification. And in case you're wondering on the other side there is uh, nothing. Got room here for another chip and you can see I wrote bots there to <laughs> indicate bottom. Well that didn't make a difference so I'm going to reflow this with some uh, hot air. Uh, I need to do this under magnification so I can't really show you exactly what I'm doing. Let me just turn the airflow down and touch. You can see I removed the carrier frame there just to undo this. So yeah, I reflowed that and I reflowed it again just now. Last night I reflowed it, one of the pins here was a bit loose. Um, anyway, it's got nothing to do with the main content of this video. I've ordered some more of these compact flashcards in the meantime. So back to the focus of the video, this 8 meg RAM board. So I'll try loading some games on this and then I'll try it with the uh, SCSI card I think, although that might interfere with the IDE on the uh, 536 here, I'm not sure. Let's try Beneath the Steel Sky. I can't load the AGA version because we've only got one mega chip on this particular board. Now you can see it's taking quite a while to load in here and this is because, like I say, it loads every single uh, asset for the game into RAM. Which makes this the best way to play this game actually. It'd be crazy to try and play it from uh, floppy disk, that's for sure. So the battery cut off there, so sorry I missed uh, the intro, but it's working fine. Just turn that up a bit. Yeah, you can hear the machine stamping away there. I don't think there's any speech on this, you need the CD32 version for the speech. So let's now test it with a stock CPU. So I removed the 536 here. One or two of these pins have just got a little bit bent, actually. One there, look, can you see that? It's kind of bent inwards. Yeah, so I straightened the pins again and uh, fitted that okay. And we got the sticker disc in screen, so that's fine. I'll go and get the A2091, let's try it with that. And here's the SCSI 2 SD mounting brackets that you saw arrive in a previous video, actually. It was when I covered the Nomad battery pack. Uh, but this looks amazing. If you look at the screw mounts here, these line up perfectly with those holes there. Uh, and then you've got four screws there, which I believe, yeah, look at that, perfect. Should hold that in place. So, yeah, I can just uh, bend this cable, you know, connect it up, and mount this on here, and have like a, you know, a permanent hard card. That's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. So, Dennis did a brilliant job of these. He sent me two, there's this one here and this uh, luminous yellow, which I think goes quite well with the, the green there, that's fine. And also this grey one here, again really nicely manufactured, it's uh, really precision. Um, it's because I had two of these, so, and I also got a card that you've not seen that'll be in a, a subsequent video. Um, another SCSI card, so uh, it's a different one, it's not the same model as this or the same make. So anyway, let's have a go at me on this one. Now I bought a load of these screws here for C64 uh, motherboards actually, ages ago. But the little self-tapping ones are just the right size, so I'm going to have a go at using a few of these, because I've got more there than ever need for C64s. So the way to do this is going to be to uh, hold this in place here, if I can. Yeah, align it with the hole, and get the screw in from this side. And hopefully it's not going to be too thick a screw. You can see the stress mark there, but I think that's in part because it's uh, clear plastic. It doesn't feel like there's a bulge or anything there. So I used a new SCSI cable from Amiga Kit there, but that uh, 3D printed bracket is fantastic from Dennis. Thank you very much for that, Dennis. Uh, you can see this was repaired in uh, 2020, this uh, SCSI 2 SD card here. It's enabled at the moment, the RAM, so I'm not really sure what will happen. So let's just uh, try and get it into this position here. Hang on. Wipe the power wire is right in the way, it's really annoying. Slide it down like that, and I'll switch it on. Yeah, it's booting okay. Is it booting from SCSI? It's not booting from SCSI. That's interesting. Yeah, the reason it wasn't booting there is because of the auto config thing. So these two pins here, 
We do need to join a wire up, that's why the A2091 was not being detected properly. It was uh, messing up auto config. So I'll just do a little bit of research, I'll perhaps visit the MKL website for the original MEM68K or whatever it is, to see exactly where those uh, wires go. I think there's just one wire perhaps you join up somewhere to the motherboard. Um, and then we'll retry it. But you can see it's booting, it's booting okay, but that's without the, the RAM module. Well there you go, I'm relieved about that. I thought uh, the SCSI card had died again or something. So in terms of connecting this device up to the auto config chain, uh, I think what I did last time was join uh, U606, that's this chip here, pin 8. That's the config out for slot 5, I think, into the in here. It might be the other way around, it might be the in. So anyway, it's from 8, I think, to the out pin here. I could be wrong about that, it might be the in pin, but we'll soon find out. I've just got that sat there, look at the moment, just to distance the wire. So I've cut the wire the right length here. We'll solder it on there in a minute uh, onto pin 8, and it should be long enough. There's going to be a little bit of flexibility, it'll reach right out here, look. It perhaps should be a little bit shorter than that, it doesn't need to be that long. Let's just uh, snip a little bit off there. That should be long enough, I think, because this is going to go like that. It's going to go on a, a socket. I'll stick a single socket here. I've got some of those uh, from there, so there'll be a little bit of flexibility. I'll stick a label on it just so it's obvious what it is, but it's useful for testing other similar types of mods in future. So the nice thing with having two solder ends now, it means I can uh, just use the crusty Antex over here without having to take this back over to the uh, mat. And um, we'll just solder that onto corner point there. There we go, that's our wire fitted. Now, I think that's the config out for slot 5, so it's going to the config in here. I think that's correct. So if I now get the CPU back in there, and then we will try and boot it on its own like that. I'll just make sure it's working. And then we'll add the A2091, and hopefully both will work. And the A2000 schematics here, these are for the R6, but I think it's the same on the R4. I think you've got the same uh, LS32 used there to, you know, on the same pin out exactly. So like pin 8 up here, it comes down to uh, CFG in 5, I think. So that's the last in the chain. I think you've got 4, 3, 2, 1 across the different slots there. So yeah, pin 8, that's where we tapped our wire which is effectively connected to that zero slot there. So let's switch it on like that. So that should come up with a yeah, sticker disk and screen. If I power cycle it and just hold both mouse buttons down, bear in mind you only get this functionality on Kickstart 2 onwards, I think. We can have a look at the expansion board stuff here. It should show, there we go, 2011. That is the 8 meg RAM board from uh, Live 2. So I switch it off, I'll get the a2091 back in. Now bear in mind the RAM is disabled on the A2091 at the moment. I'm hoping to see two devices here. Yay, there we go. So we got a 514, which is the A2091, and 2011, which is the 8 meg RAM board. So if I now cycle the power again, it should boot from SCSI, I think. And we should have 8 meg. A fast yeah, that's much better. You can see it working now. Previously, before we did that wire, it was not detecting the A2091. You know, the uh, 8 meg RAM board was kind of stealing all of the auto config stuff. It wasn't allowing auto config to operate normally. And you can do a similar thing there with the A590. You know, there's going to be a pin on the A590 that you can connect up there to this RAM board, and then you will have 8 meg. Uh, with uh, you know using an A590, but bear in mind with the A590, if you've got two meg on board, you need to disable it probably. I mean the RAM on this A2091 is disabled at the moment. I might just try and enable two meg and see what happens. I'm, I'm guessing if this might be a conflict, or it might just not allow it. Let's just click somewhere. There we go, eight meg of the RAM. Fantastic. Let's just give it the time gal test if we can find it. Is it on DF4? There it is. Yeah, I think we can say that's working all right. Obviously, I would need to boot sys check or something and uh, just run a RAM test. You know, now we've done that because we've done a configuration change here. It's not just a case of plugging it in. We've now got that wire. Let's just try changing that back to two meg. 
I'll be interested to see if we get a clash or not. I honestly do not know. It's not something I've tried, I don't think. Well, it's booting again, so let's just let that get to the desktop. It might be intelligent enough to go, oh, there's no, you know, you've got no space free within the address range there, so you can't allocate that to Meg. That might be how it works. Having said that, you'd think the 2 meg would be allocated first due to where it sits in the autoconfig chain and the 8 meg board might be disabled. So let's just see, do we end up with 2 meg? Hang on a minute, check some. That's not good. Yeah, that's not working, is it? We've got some sort of issue there. Let me just try disabling it again. I hope I've messed up my SD card. I have had that before where you can mess these SD cards up if you're not careful. I've got it imaged anyway, I can always write it back if I have messed it up. Yeah, no checksum errors there. So that is a little bit strange. That could just be the clash there, you know, with the 2 meg clashing with the 8 meg. I'll try that again. Let's just uh, do that just to rule it out, put it back into uh, 2 meg again. Exactly the same error. My guess is it's doing a DMA transfer at that point because we've got some sort of memory conflict because we've got uh, 2 meg and 8 meg and it can only address 8 meg uh, there's an issue there with that uh, overlapping 2 meg that's what I think is probably going on there so yeah that's useful to know make sure you don't go beyond 8 meg in terms of you know what you've actually got enabled on your cards and a quick look in sysinfo there it's coming up uh, 8 meg kick 24 DMA the only other thing we should have is 1 meg of chip RAM there we go that's correct Exit. I'm just doing a speed test on the uh, SCSI drive here. You only get about one meg, uh, the mode it's, it's in at the moment. So about 900k per second. That's about right for this uh, this card. So everything is working there in the Rev6. So this is the A500 Plus board that I'm using to test. You can see we've got the Super Denise adapter up here. Got the ROM switcher here that you haven't uh, seen yet. There'll be a, another short video coming up on that very soon. Uh, and it's the one that had tons and tons of uh, corrosion and stuff and all sorts of things done to it. I'll post links to that as well. So all connected up. Just making sure that still works and it does. No problems at all. So let's get the uh, RAM board into here. There we go. Yeah. It's definitely had something in there before because normally they won't fit quite that easily. Let's get its CPU back in. That's it. It's a fairly good fit. So we've got sys check in the drive. That's booted. There we go. 8 meg fast, 1 meg chip. Fantastic. So we'll do a test on that as well. I haven't shown all the tests I've been doing here. You know, I've been testing everything the same way here. Testing the sys test, you know, booting up games and things. Uh, everything you would uh, generally expect just to put some load onto that RAM and to fill it up and stuff and uh, utilise it. And everything is uh, working fine. It's been going a while, like it's on uh, pass 7 at the moment, no problems at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is connect up the A590. Before I do that, I need to put a wire on the A500 Plus motherboard here to uh, accommodate. So I think, looking at the schematics, we need to go from pin 11, which is this one here. I've got a piece of captain tape here and just isolated everything apart from the very tip there of that uh, pad. That doesn't go anywhere, it's not connected. But on the A590 it is, it's config out, comes there. So if we connect that to the config in here, uh, just a short wire, you can see I've got the wire here, so I just need to just tin it up. I didn't show you the other one uh, assembling it, so uh, I'll show you that, it's dead simple. It's just uh, heat a little bit of solder in, got the jitters at the moment, there we go. Let's do the other end. One end's got longer wire here. Uh, and that is deliberate for the uh, single pin connector. So I've got some of these uh, single pins here, just need to snip one of them off at the point it joins the frame here. Like that, there's our pin. And get one of these uh, single uh, housing ends for this. Is it classed as depompus? I'm not sure. I think it probably is. I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing here, but I feed it in there so that the blue bit is underneath the little flappy parts there and then gradually bend one side over it takes a little bit of practice to do this there is a special tool you can get to do these depont uh, things you know. bend the other one over squeeze them together squeeze them both down together squeeze them together a few times just to get a nice square 
crimp around the edge of the wire there. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing, but you can see that that's crimped on now. But the centre part, that's crimp as well, you know, it's two little metal parts like that and you can squash them over. But I don't do that. What I do, add a little bit of solder and uh, heat to actually solder it on rather than crimp it. There we go. Yeah, hopefully you can just about see that. I've got the smallest bit of solder just holding that in there. And finally, the uh, black housing here, it's got a thin end on one end, that's the end that goes on the outside. And then finally, you get the bit with the gap here, we've got the small end of the uh, hole there, a larger end there, and we need to slide it on that way, I think, and then push it right in. There we go, it's in, and it's firm, if I pull it, it won't come back out, so that's that bit uh, done. And it's just going to go from down here and bend around like that. So uh, well, yeah, we'll do the bending bit in a minute. We don't need a really long bit exposed there because it's going to be a really small join. Bear in mind, it might not be very reliable in terms of bending and stuff like that. Uh, let me just count these again. It goes 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. That's pin 11. And um, we'll just try and get a little bit of solder on there. <laughs> I can't even see why I'm doing through the viewfinder here. Well, it's the fudgiest of setups here on this uh, box. It's uh, it's not really safe for ESD and stuff like that, but it's working. It's booting. I've got a black screen at the moment. Still booting. There we go. Finally. Did take a while. Yeah, there we go. 5976. So one of the things and i pointed this out before when we looked at the a590 you need quite a lot of ram when you've got lots of hard disks here uh, and the maybe the size of the disk dictates how much ram gets used as well so you do need to add extra ram in order to get drives and things working that's uh, useful information uh this info because that should show us the full eight meg you know because the moment we're only seeing about six of it aren't we memory so we've got two mega fast there on the a590 four meg oh hang on yeah okay i understand what's going on there it's disabled uh four meg isn't it automatically four meg of zoro 2 from the live 2 board more mega chip so we have actually got six meg so if i hang on it's just uh just checking everything's uh, okay temperature wise it is because you'll know that i had some interesting problems with that a590 but anyway it's been fine ever since so let's switch that off. I'm going to put the A590 into amnesia mode. We'll boot it again. That should give us 8 meg. Almost finished booting. There we go. Hopefully got more RAM. Yes we do. There we go. Full 8 meg. So there we go. That's what happens on an A500 where you get a clash. On the A2000 for some reason it seemed to be trying to overlap them in some kind of way. There seemed to be a weird incompatibility when you didn't disable the 2 meg on the uh, A2091. With the A590, it, it, we seemed to lose a f uh, 2 meg, didn't we? We lost a, a chunk. Uh, we ended up with 4 meg on the Live 2 board. It disabled 4 of it. Uh, but anyway, you can get around it by just disabling the RAM on the A590. So we do have 8 meg. Memory. There we go, 8 meg fast ROM, 24 bit DMA, and 1 meg chip. Fantastic. I do have a uh, memory module for this, I can plug into this, that provides an extra 1 meg chip actually. It takes my A500 plus up to 2 meg, so in total I can have 10 meg on here without an issue. Sweet. So that used a large chunk of the memory actually. I watched the progress bar and uh, the memory at the top, just as it flickered, as it changed the black screen, there was about 2 meg of that fast ROM left. So. That's using 6 meg of the fast RAM. So I think this is a, a fairly good test. We're not using all of it, but it's certainly a good test. So I've got the copy protection thing there. And that's working fine, no problems at all. And you can see our little wire here into the config in pin here. So effectively, the 8 meg RAM upgrade is the last thing in the chain here. So this is the A590 connector here from the A590 schematics. And you can see there, pin 11, well just about, it's a very small print, is the config out pin. 
And then you've got the config in pin on the other side there. I didn't check whether that's actually connected. It may be tied to ground or, uh, you know, VCC via a pull-up or something. Because there's no other, you know, there are no other slots or anything like that in the A500. It hasn't got an auto config chain. It kind of starts with whatever's plugged in here. So I've tested that on a number of boards here. I've tested it on the Rev4 A2000, the Rev6 A2000, the A500 Plus off camera yesterday I tested it on a Rev 6 and a Rev 5. Uh, I've not tested it on the Rev 3 boards but I've got no reason to believe there would be uh, any reason why this wouldn't work on a Rev 3 board. So anyway you've got the uh, 60, uh, is it 4? I think it is 64 pins, 68,000 dip socket there. You can uh, utilise this. So only a short video, thank you very much to Live2 for providing this and for being one of my 32-bit tier patrons at the moment as well. Very much appreciated. And before I forget, thank you very much to Dennis Vandenbroek for the uh, 3D printed bracket here for my uh, A2091. And I'll post some links down below to the GitHub uh, link for this and uh, the social media of uh, both guys here. But yeah, the main focus of this was uh, the RAM board here. But I am very appreciative of this 3D bracket too. If you'd like to support the channel please see the coffee and patreon links down below thanks for subscribing thanks for your comments i'll catch you in the next video